Hello everyone, so today we'll be taking a look at yet another vacuum cleaner. Today we'll be looking at this 1978 Hoover Junior Deluxe. Now this machine came out in about 1975, branded Hoover Starlight, and in about 1977 they changed it to Junior Deluxe for whatever reason. Now the only difference between the Starlight and the Junior Deluxe was the Starlight had a bag full indicator here where it says Junior Deluxe and it also had a headlight, but apart from that, and Hoover changing the colour schemes, the Junior Deluxe and Starlight are practically the same machine. Now this is a pretty rare Hoover Upright, um, they only made them from about 75 to 81-ish, um, so you know, they're, they were pretty short running, and it's a shame really, because it's a really good machine, it performs really well, and you know, it's a pretty sturdy cleaner when compared to the turbo powers which practically replaced this in about 1983 this machine is much sturdier um, but anyway I've fully restored this um, I have done a before video of this machine um, when I first got it um, but it's fully cleaned up, fully restored and it's ready to go so I don't have any tools with this so I can only demonstrate it as an upright but I'll first start by giving you an overview of the machine and then we'll see it in action so without further ado, let's have a look. Right, okay then, let's have a little tour around the machine. So starting from the bottom up, as per usual on these videos, here we can see the cleaner head, and in the bottom corner there we have the Hoover Roundel, which is rather unusually a silver and black colour. I suppose it's to match the contrasting accents on the machine, but the Hoover Roundel is usually a white and red affair. So here we have the height to right control, as Hoover called it, basically the height adjustment. So we have short pile, then we have the second setting, which is for your short to medium pile. Then we have the medium and longer pile carpets, and then the fourth setting, which is the highest setting, is for your shag pile carpets, which you would have had a plentiful in the 70s. So as you can see, it does lift it quite high off the floor. I can get my hands under there. So the height adjustment does actually make a significant difference between the higher and lower settings, unlike the regular Junior. So here we can see the Junior Deluxe lettering. If I bring it a little bit closer, you can hopefully see that, which I did touch that up so it does look a lot better than it did before. And if I just recline the machine down slightly, here you can see a blanking piece. On the Starlight models, um, this would have been a headlight. So moving on up the front of the machine here, we can see the carrying handle at the front there. We have the Hoover lettering, which again I did touch up to make it look more or less as it would have done when it was new. We have the on-off switch which is just a rocker switch affair. Then we have the bag door release, so we press that down to open the bag compartment. So here we have inside the bag compartment. As you can see, the bag door hinges, and there's a little strap there, a little rubber strap, which stops the bag door from smacking into the cleaner head if you were to let go of it. But the bag door does stay attached, much like the turbo powers, which came later in the early 80s. So here's the bag it takes, it's just a single layer paper bag. They don't fit very securely, but there you go, it's just a push fit. I'm not sure what the code is for these bags, but they're to fit the Starlight and Junior Deluxe. They're a little bit too big to be honest, because as you can see there's the, the um, cardboard faceplate that goes onto the fill tube. So that's there, but as you can see there's all this extra length it's just seemed too long, but anyway, that's the bag, and it has a little slide clip so you can empty it. So this is a dirty fan machine, as I mentioned, so everything you pick up gets um, dislodged by the brush roll, goes up the side channel here in the cleaner head, goes into the fan casing, passes through the fan, or past to the fan I should say, and gets blown up this internal ducting fill tube here, and blown into the bag and then all the air escapes 
or exhaust air I should say, escape, escapes around the sides of the back door. So that's basically how the air path works. Now the earlier models, the Starlight models, had a bag check indicator light. So basically, there's a little cutout here and there's these little um, air channels in the bottom of the bag compartment and basically when the airflow reduces which is blowing through this whole compartment here um, there, were, there was a little rubberized sort of flap here on the inside of this motor casing here and when the airflow reduced that blowing through here um, that little flap would drop down allowing the headlight to shine through the little um, hole there which would have had a, li a little red plastic cover here so it would have glowed red and um, so it wasn't actually an electronic light for the the bag check indicator like the turbo powers which came later on and um, it was a pretty primitive way of doing it really it, I think the convertible or as it was known in America the dialomatic had a similar feature like that but basically it used the headlight to work the bagful indicator so that's inside the uh, bag compartment the bag fits back on and we have the um, we can't really see it there the rating sticker here I'll zoom in on that so hopefully you can just about see that the rating sticker on this machine is located in a strange place really um, it's on the inside of the bag compartment at the top of the bag door so that's quite unusual they're usually located on the base but anyway as you can see it says Hoover model U2068 240 volts 50 hertz 350 watts so you know it's quite low wattage Hoover uprights back in the day were pretty low wattage because they were all dirty air machines on the whole and dirty air cleaners don't need to have lots of wattage to clean well because of the design but anyway um, as you can see we have the Hoover logo there and the double insulated square logo there's also an electrical approvals logo there it says serial number U2068 8030927 so the U2068 is the model number 803 is the date so that's March 1978 and 09271 is the batch number so it says trademarks of Hoover Limited made by Hoover Limited Great Britain so of course a British made Hoover upright as you would expect for a 1970s machine so moving to the top of the machine now something we don't tend to see much these days we have a metal handle so a very strong handle and we have a nice rubber grip there which is very nice to hold and it doesn't slip out your hand so that's very nice so moving round to the back of the machine here, you can see we have the card storage. So the top hook actually swivels down to release all the card at once, which was actually classed as a feature back in the day. So it's quite a sharp card, it's only about 6 metres, but that's pretty typical of the time. It's also typical to see a white card on a Hoover upright for this um, time period. And it's in good condition, the card. It's got a nice original sort of plug on it, Volex or Volex, however you want to pronounce that so the top hook will swivel back to the top there and we have the um, strain relief for the card still intact we have the lower hook which would have had a snap action originally and I did try and find something to put the spring back in that but you know um, it is what it is so at least the card hook is intact because many times you'll find that these have snapped off so at the bottom there we can see we have the motor cooling um, vent so that's where air is sucked in to cool the motor down so that's about all there is to see from the back if I just slightly lower the camera there you can see we have the handle release pedal and press that you can release it to the operating position and it also brings that into the three quarter position so you can see we have um, a means to get over um, tassels on rugs 
and also door thresholds. But if we press it again, we can go completely flat to the floor and get under beds, etc. It has such a quality sound to it. That is a metal mechanism in there. Um, such good quality, you know. So we have a bumper which runs all the way around, which I forgot to mention before. Uh, similar to the regular Junior, how the bumper wraps around the entire circumference of the machine. So the only other thing to show you now is the base. So this is what sold Hoover. This is the agitator brush roll, that's what they called it. So it has beta bars on one side and brushes on the other, and that's staggered on the opposite side of the brush roll. And they're set out in sort of a diagonal design. So because they're set out in a diagonal design and they're staggered on each side of the brush roll, that's what made the beating action, the carpet, bum 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 like that. So the base on this machine, the sorry, the base plate, does unlatch. I can just pop these little clips off here, like that, and then the entire base plate will lift off. You don't need any tools, and of course that's metal. So here we have access to the belt on this side, and here is the suction side. So of course, as you can see, the brush roll has been fully restored. If you have seen my before video of this machine, you can see that the brush roll looks pretty much brand new now. I'm really pleased with the restoration on this machine. So the base plate just fits back on. Uh, the brush roll, sorry I forgot to mention, sits in just in uh, the same way as other Hoover uprights at the time. They have these little metal spring clips and the brush roll just pushes into place. And the base plate just fits back on very easily. As I said, you don't need any tools. It's a bit tricky lining these clips back up. But they do go on. There we are. And the other one. There we are. So we have the height adjustment wheels there. Very smooth running. And the small um, back wheels. So they're not too wobbly on this machine, so I don't think it's seen an awful lot of use. But there we are, that's the base. Okay then, so she's plugged in and ready to go. So I'll first push it round a little bit, and then I'll put some dirt down and we can see how well this old girl picks up. So here we go. does run very well considering it's 39 years old. So it's probably not as smooth as it was originally, but it definitely has the very famous Hoover growl. So anyway, I've put some dirt on my landing carpet here. Um, it's just the contents of an old vacuum bag. I think it was out of a junior. But anyway, um, we'll see how well this performs and hopefully we'll get some rather vigorous beating action. So here we go. 350 watts from 1978. Let's see how well this Hoover Junior Deluxe performs.
as you can see, um, the suction was so powerful it was actually pulling the carpet up. Um, we actually have a riser, not a riser, sorry, a threshold there between the bathroom and the landing which is missing and it was really moving the carpet about the suction's that powerful. But as you can see we did get quite a lot of the bouncy bouncy. So the carpet's pretty much clean so I'm very happy with that for a 40 year old machine. So there we have it. As you can see, the old girl's still got it in her. This Hoover Junior Deluxe really does pick up the dirt. And for just a 350 watt machine, it makes you wonder why they ever had to up the wattage in the first place. So it's a very powerful little upright machine, despite its size. I think the Junior Deluxe is probably one of the first sort of modern looking Hoover uprights to carry on the same design right through to the late 90s in the fact that all the ducting is hidden between the cleaner head and the body. So it's a very nice machine, I think every collector should have one, they're getting rarer now so if you can find one then save it, don't let it go to the tip because you know um, it's an important part of Hoover history if you ask me. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this rather short video. As I said, I don't have any of the tools, so I can't really make a longer demo. But hopefully this has been enough to satisfy your vacuum interests for another day. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.